And welcome everyone to a Pac-12 chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Larry Kristoyak from Utah. And Larry, I want to get to the season that just happened and looking ahead because I'm very bullish on this team and I'll tell you why here in a moment. Uh, but first, how are you handling uh, this global pandemic that's got us all sheltered in to place? Well, we're, we're doing quite, quite well, Andy, from a family point of view. Uh, we've got five kids. We're all here wife, myself, dogs. Uh, we seem to find a little bit of a routine. We're fortunate to have a, uh, indoor basketball court, half court, and then, a uh, kind of a medium sized gym for the boys to, to stay active and fit. Uh, we just got off about an hour and a half zoom call with our, with our players from all over the world, the Swede, uh, Finland, and we've got it, uh, do that every week on Tuesday. So it's nice to see all the faces and, you know, we're, we're making it. We have nothing to complain about. It might, might have tipped over our apple cart here a little bit, but I feel like we're all super fortunate. And at this point, nobody's feeling in, uh, any of the medical uh, implications from the virus. So knock on wood. All right. So that's all good news. But as you said, I mean, you're incredibly fortunate that you actually have a court. And in my discussions with players and coaches around the world that I've had a chance to talk to over the last couple of weeks, that's a big problem. A lot of public parks are closed because they don't want people gathering to play basketball. Um, how yeah. are your players handling that where, at least in the short term, probably most of them can't actually go out and shoot? Yeah, no, it's a challenge. And there are a handful with, uh, with homes or a church, perhaps. Uh, a lot of things are locked down, as you see. I was watching the, the basketball, the NBA Y2K stuff and they had a bunch of the NBA guys getting creative. You know, I think there's form shooting, there's ball handling. Uh, the one thing about it at, at this time, Andy, is that everybody's kind of in the same boat. And if you're going to be a dude, we just visited with our players about it. You'll find a way to be a dude. And, you know, there's some excuses we can make. I know one thing is, is you need to be able to run. You need to get out and run. And, and if you're going to be a good basketball player and there's really nothing stopping anybody from doing that. And, you know, I, I think I've mentioned to our team, you can get in really good physical shape if you're in, if you're incarcerated, you know, and they don't have fancy facilities. We're real fortunate to have great facilities, but a lot of times it's a mindset that you need to have if you want to improve your game. And, and finally, the thing that we challenge our guys to do is be a student of the game. We don't have college basketball on yesterday would have been the national championship. Obviously, the NBA season winding down in the playoffs, so we can't socially watch the game. But I've challenged our guys to pick two or three of their favorite players out, pick up, get up some old video on them, and and isolate and watch some of what they do that makes them successful. So a lot of it can be an excuse, and we're just going to make the most of it. And, and everybody needs to uh, attack it from a different perspective. So let's first look back at the season. Um, you guys had some great moments. It was the inexperience and inconsistency that. We're able to stretch you to put you in position. Had there been a tournament where we'd have said, okay, Utah should or could be in. I mean, obviously the Kentucky win was one of the heights. Good wins within the Pac-12. Uh, when you look back, um, I mean, how would you assess what you got out of this season? Well, we've always broken it into three parts with the uh, with the preseason. And we had a heck of a schedule. Uh, we got the season kicked off with a good win at Nevada. And, and then won on a neutral court in Vegas against Kentucky. Had a nice win at home against uh, BYU. We had a couple losses uh, when we were out at Myrtle Beach. But I was, you know, if you would have told me that we could be 9-3 and three in the preseason with, with one of the youngest teams in the country and an awful lot of teaching and newness to it all, I certainly would have hit the, the deal button. And, uh, and then we got into a real tough Pac-12 season. You know, there's not many secrets. I think there became a little bit of a blueprint on how to play us. We had a few chinks in our armor um, we could be vulnerable with. And we had moments in different games. The, you know, the big question was, you can't win a Pac-12 game on the road. And we have a couple games where we didn't hit open shots, a couple games where we turned the ball over too many times. The theme wasn't consistent, but I think overall the theme was that we were growing and uh, and also kind of the recipients of a good a good league. I think there would have been six or seven teams in the Pac-12 in the tournament. So we had to be better than we were. And then obviously lost a heartbreaker in the Pac-12 tournament in the postseason. 
never came to be. Uh, we played a game last at the buzzer to Oregon State, and then the next day they called the season off for everybody. So, um, you know, I, I like the fact that we've got everybody coming back. We've got one of our highest-ranked recruiting classes. And in these times when you've got so much uncertainty and, you know, everybody's in the same situation, I certainly like where we are, um, you know, just knowing what we know. Yeah, let's assume you don't lose anybody to either the transfer portal or early entry. I mean, this is what I love, and I had you guys in uh, in my Power 36 that's coming out for March Madness because, you know, Allen, Jones, Gotch, uh, Plummer played well, obviously, at the end, uh, the recruiting class. So if this group stays together uh, and there are no distractions outside of what we can't control here, um, I feel really good from the outside. How do you feel about what could happen next season? Well, I think you're always cautiously optimistic, but you know, when you talk about a hundred percent of your production coming back and then some elite recruits that are joining us, uh, it was an awful lot of fun this year coaching, uh, and teaching, but I don't know in any year that I've ever coached that we probably had to do as much of it. It was pretty rewarding. Uh, but with a young team, we had seven, eight freshmen. Yeah, you know, we'd look out there oftentimes and have three or four freshmen and a sophomore on the court. Uh, we don't, we didn't, we had one senior walk on and only one junior. So, you know, you're optimistic about it. I think we can really hit the ground running. And I, I've always said, even if you don't improve as a player, uh, just knowing what you know coming in, like from freshman to sophomore year, just knowing what you come come back with and understanding that I think is really going to help propel some of our guys. And we know our guys a little bit better than we did a year ago. And I think we can implement some things and come up with a pretty good plan. This is also a great time for coaches, you know, to be steady in the game and and taking a look at numbers and how other teams are doing things. So we're not sitting back, uh, you know, relaxing at this point. I think we're challenging our players to make some progress and we as a staff are going to make some progress and, I'm super excited about it. Well, Larry, I appreciate it. Uh, Stay safe. And, uh, you know, hopefully sooner than later, we're going to be on the other side. Yeah, thank you. And and happy birthday, brother. (laughs) Thank you. Happy birthday. You're looking good. Well, thank you. Trying to. All right.